All right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. the bomb. <gasps> Party. Mm-mm. I'm not even joking. You can't tell. This is low carb. If you guys miss a chicken pot pie, this right here is your recipe. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Myra from Low Carb Love, and today we're gonna to be making a keto chicken pot pie. So of course we're getting into the season where cold weather's coming, there's holidays, there's, you know, just like the coziness and comfort foods is where this time of the year comes in. So I think that this recipe is going to be amazing for those days where it's cold, rainy, and you just feel like having something warm and, you know, just kind of filling um, versus something really light like a salad or whatever the case is, right? But you still want to stay within your macros. If you're living a low carb lifestyle, keto lifestyle, this right here is going to be just that. So, um, and even if you actually don't live a low carb lifestyle, this recipe is absolutely delicious and you are going to love. So it's just healthier flours, healthier ingredients, and overall just a healthier recipe of a not so much, um, you know, healthy recipe. So anyway, let's get started. There are, um, this is like a two-step process. We're first gonna make the uh, filling and then we're going to make the, um, the pie, the topping. And so anyway, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna stop talking and um, let's just get to it, okay? So what we're gonna do first is we are going to uh, dice up an onion. So you're gonna use about a quarter of an onion. If you wanna do a measuring cup, you wanna do between like a third of a cup to up to a half cup if you're, you know, if you really love onion. If not, just stick to like a third of a cup or omit it all together because of course this is your recipe. Then we have chayote. So this here, um, if you've never heard of it or seen it, it doesn't really have a strong flavor. It's pretty neutral. Actually, in a lot of our recipes in the low carb keto space, um, you can actually even use this as a dessert. So you can, um, this can take place of a potato or even an apple. So just to give you an idea of how neutral the taste is, okay? So I'm personally gonna use it in this recipe but it is completely optional. So if you're like, I don't even know what that is, it's not gonna be a big deal. I've made it both ways just to make sure, and both ways turns out just great. This will probably just give your pot pie a little bit more bulk, and um, of course it's a veggie, so it's super low in calories, um, and it is a really low carb veggie as well. So it is your decision if you wanna add it, do it, and if not, it's not gonna do anything to your recipe. Like it's not gonna make it or break it basically, okay? So we are going to, you're gonna to wanna to boil these for about 10 to 15 minutes, just until tender, not completely cooked because this is gonna keep cooking in the oven. But I've already done that just to save time and I wanna show you, like you can literally stick a, for a knife through it, but it's not just gonna slide right through, right? Cause you don't want it to get mushy. Um, this can get mushy if you overcook it, okay? So we're first going to, since these are ready, we're going to peel them and then dice them. So let's do that first. And then I will show you uh, once we get to the uh, stove. Just gonna do a little potato peeler and uh, peel this little guy, okay? So you can see. And don't let the color scare you. It's really just a very neutral, neutral uh, taste. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and dice these. And, um, ooh, it's hot. Literally just pulled them off, but. And you just want to cube them. Um, I would say you probably want to mimic potato, just in your mind. It's what we're going for in terms of size. Um, okay. So these might be a little big, but um, this is probably more the size you wanna go for. So it's just kinda like something, you know, like let's cut them a little smaller. I mean, but you know, again, this is up to you. This is your, 
your pot pie. So, okay, so now that we have our chayote all diced, we are going to saute our onion on the stovetop. So we are going to be using a half cup of butter, and yeah, it seems like a lot, but remember this is for the entire dish, and it's going to, you know, trust me on this, it is going to be perfection, okay? So let's move on to the stove, and let's go ahead and start sauteing our veggies, um, and then I will show you what we'll need. Okay, so we're gonna turn our heat on to about a medium, I would say a medium high. We're gonna add our butter, okay? So let's go ahead and add our butter. We're just gonna let that heat up. And once it's nice and bubbly like this, let's go ahead and add our onion, okay? So we're gonna saute our onion just until it's a little tender or translucent. And once that is set, we're going to add our spices, okay? So our spices is just our pepper, our salt, and our chicken bouillon. We're gonna mix that in. We are gonna add a little xanthan gum. So if you guys don't know what xanthan gum is, it's just a little, it's a thickening agent and um, it's just gonna make a world of a difference, right? Because we're not adding real flour, and so it's actually really necessary to add either xanthan gum or the other one is like guru gum, but in my opinion, xanthan gum is super easy to, you know, to find, and that's what I use. Okay, now we add the chicken broth. So you're gonna add chicken broth and heavy cream, and we're just gonna stir that all together So we're gonna add our veggies and we're just gonna allow everything to thicken up. So once you see that everything is thickened, then you're just gonna taste it. Okay, so let's taste and make sure that the salt and everything is on point. Okay, so we have our uh, filling thickening. We are missing obviously the core ingredient. Um, you can totally make this a, you know, uh, meatless, a meatless dish if you don't add your, you know, if you don't add chicken. But we are, and this is a rotisserie chicken. So um, you can actually, you can actually use leftovers for this um, because we need about, I would say two cups of chicken. So, you know, I'm gonna be a little savage here, so don't mind me. But let's go ahead and uh, get about half. I'm gonna get some of the breast. Okay, see that, it's nice. And let's do this first and then we will see how much we have. But what we need are two, two cups, okay? So I'm just gonna chop it up. If you have a food processor, whatever, you can even use like a mix, uh, hand mixer. I've seen a lot of people do their, their chicken that way. So I'm just gonna chop it up into little pieces. And again, if you want to mix this, you totally can and we'll measure it just for the sake of you know measuring for you guys and we are going to do two cups okay so there is one and we will do two okay let's just make sure wow i got it perfect okay let's go ahead and put our chicken into our mixture Okay, so at this point you can see that it is thickening up a bit, but it's not, you know, like clumpy or anything. So we're gonna leave it at that and we are going to start adding our chicken. Okay, so now I've turned off the heat on our filling and we're gonna get started with our crust, but I know some of you will have questions. So regarding the mixed veggies, just find green beans. Um, you can find the lowest carb veggie possible. Um, this one here has eight carbs per two thirds of a cup. So, um, you know, we're fine with it. I'm pretty much doing OMAD, so it works for me. Um, but if you're like really strict on your macros and you'd wanna maybe just use green beans, okay? As for the rotisserie chicken, if you don't like rotisserie chicken, then use thighs, then use, um, what else? Chicken breasts, like just buy it boil it, salt, pepper it, and then you can use that, okay? Okay, 
So let's get started. We have our melted butter. We have about half cup. Then we have our almond flour. So we're just gonna throw everything in and we're just gonna mix it up. So even if you want, you can throw everything onto your almond flour. So we have our garlic powder. It's been sitting here for a bit. We have our garlic powder, our baking powder. We have our pepper so that it's nice and seasoned. And I think that's pretty much um, it. So we're just gonna give it like a quick little mix. If you have a little whisk, just whisk everything together. This is very forgivable. Once you mix everything in, it's gonna be just fine. But you know, some people like to do that first. Um, we're gonna do our mayo. It's just a little secret ingredient to make sure that your stuff is nice and moist. So as you can see, I'm just mixing it right into our butter. And um, that way we can kind of, I always like to separate my liquids and my dry ingredients. So we have that mixed into our butter. Let's go ahead and add our eggs. And then we will give that a little whisk before we combine our, before we combine our ingredients. But to be honest with you, if you did a mixture of both, it's gonna be perfectly fine. So, now that we have that all mixed in, let's go ahead and put in our dry ingredients, okay? So we're just gonna add our dry ingredients right in. And we're just gonna put that into our wet. And if you can see that, I'm just gonna start mixing everything in. If you wanna do this in your stand mixer or a hand mixer, you can do that, but it's definitely not necessary. Probably just might as well mix in our cheese. You can do cheddar. I did the Mexican blend because that's what I have on hand. You just want to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, just mixed well. You can even use a fork or a whisk or anything to make sure of that. But I pretty much feel like this is good. Oh, you know what else? Make sure that your oven is preheated, okay? While you're doing all this so that you don't get to your oven and it's cold. So your oven needs to be preheated at 350 degrees. Okay guys, so now that our our dough, now that our dough is done, this is gonna be our crust, our topping. What we're gonna do here is we're going to roll it out. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, but if you feel like this step is a little too much, you can literally get this and scoop it over your filling, okay? I'm just doing it for the sake of like, you know, aesthetically pleasing images. I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and um, roll this out. So we have two pieces of parchment. We're gonna put one under, and then let's put our little dough on top. It's not cooperating with me. There we are. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. Actually, I don't want it to be bigger than this. Can I use your pan so you can see the size of what you want? Um. Okay, that's perfect, right about there. Okay, I might have gone over a tiny. Just scrape that off, no big deal. Okay, so here is our dough, nice and finished, our topping. So here's our filling. Okay, so as you can tell, it has now thickened up to a good consistency. Look at that. I mean, you can literally eat it even without the topping. Like, oh my gosh, wow. Just make a little cornbread on the side. Poo. So um, yeah, you have options here, guys. You have options, okay? So now let's go ahead and pour it right onto our um, baking dish. So let's see if you guys can see that. You can see the consistency. So now the hard part is gonna be putting our dough right on top. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna flip it right on top. All right, so that looks beautiful. Let's just clean a little bit right here because this is definitely to the brim. So 
we're gonna clean this up before we put it into the oven but I mean I'm pretty proud I'm pretty proud I was able to get it pretty smooth on top okay so I've now scored the middle so that it can release you know pressure when it starts to bubble in there and um, we're gonna put it in for about 20 to 25 minutes um, we'll check it in 20 see where it's at you just want the top to be nice and golden brown because obviously the fillings already cooked so let's go ahead and put it in look at how beauty okay so I also put a piece of aluminum just in case it were to bubble over but we're gonna put it in 350 20 minutes we'll come back and check it out Okay guys, so we ended up cooking this for 25 minutes. Let's take it out. Wow, look at that beauty. Oh my gosh, it's turned out gorgeous. Okay, so we've let this cool now, right? I can touch it. It's looking beautiful. So now let's cut it. But remember there's no crust, so you're gonna kinda have to scoop it out. Trying to be as neat as possible here. Let's see, guys. Let's see. Okay, I'm scared. I'm trying to have it look all neat. Okay, I have this pie thing, but even though it doesn't have a crust. Wow, I was almost able to scoop it out like a pie. Yee! Okay, so of course, you know, there's a little bit of the filling here, but all in all, I think that looks beautiful. Look at that. And of course, if you want to get any of the extra stuff here, the filling, because you know that's really like the best part. So we'll just put it right here on the side. So that it doesn't feel gypped. But anyway, this doesn't have a crust. But honestly, um, I'm super happy the way this turned out. And taking the time to smooth this out makes it look a lot prettier. Just FYI, in case you guys want to do that. And if not, you can just kind of scoop it up and it's going to be perfect. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this little baby a try. Okay, guys, so now for my favorite part, the taste test. So I've been fasting all day. I'm actually really, really hungry and this has been smelling so amazing throughout the day. So I'm excited to now do the taste test. I don't know, this to me just looks like perfection. I don't know if you could see that, but mm, 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 mm. So let's go ahead and go in. Let's see, if you wanna take a look at what the crust looks like, I'll kind of cut it here so that you can see the texture. And so it is kind of like a little flaky, you can say. Well, I would I would be the only one grabbing this with a spoon. But anyway, let's go in for the bite. All right. What the heck? Guys, I'm not even joking right now. I can't even tell this is low carb. Just have to make sure. I'm all right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This is a bomb. Party. Mm-mm. I'm not even joking. You can't tell. This is low carb. If you guys miss a chicken pot pie, this right here is your recipe. I mean, I don't know. I kind of like... I think like flattening it out just mentally makes me feel like it looks more like a pot pie. Um, but the taste is just a 10 out of 10. My little nephews I'm water polo practice. If not, I'd have her here and she'd go crazy about it. But um, no, you guys have to make this. You guys are gonna love it. The cold weather's coming and this is gonna be perfect for like a rainy day where you just wanna stay in, have something like comforting, just like the comfort foods, guys, it's coming. And so this is why I'm gonna start making these recipes. If you have any ideas on another comfort food that you guys want me to 
keto high or just make like low carb, comment down below and let me know because this is the time. This is the time where we need to make like lasagna. We need to make, I don't know. I mean, let me know what you guys want to make or what you want to see me make and it's coming, okay? So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. You guys are gonna love this recipe. I cannot wait to see your recreations. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure you're following me on Instagram. Make sure you're following me here on YouTube and turn your post notifications on so you don't miss any of my videos. Guys, I love you and I will see you on my next video. Mwah.